Chef Saturday, you played with Peyton Manning, and I know you believe he's the greatest quarterback of all time. If Peyton Manning had been drafted, and again, he was drafted onto a terrible team and suffered through some tough times, but was given the time. That was a different right. era, not this rookie salary cap era where we give up on quarterbacks in about 15 minutes if they don't show you what they want. If Peyton Manning had been drafted, just for example, into the situation Sam Darnold was three years ago, I don't think that he'd Oof. be Peyton Manning today, and that's just the reality of the situation. You're 100% right. I mean, listen, where you go and what the general manager, head coach, offensive coordinator surrounds you with and the plan they set for your development matters. Like when you have this conversation about Sam Darnold and everybody's like, oh, well, we're going to get rid of him for Zach Wilson and he's just there's going to be a, this huge upgrade. Like Sam Darnold a few years ago was talked about better than Zach Wilson. So it's just a silly idea that these kids just come in and, again, like Dom said, completely you know change an organization. That's not going to happen. These guys have to be developed, grow, and, and, and move forward for this football team. And, and I, I think when you, your point is well made. It doesn't matter. I mean, they just got to get better in their development. So of the three quarterbacks that have surpassed him during the season, surpassed Fields, one of them is Mac Jones, who won the national championship at Alabama and put up all these uh, statistically the greatest season that we've ever seen from any college quarterback. And is it him San Francisco is coming up to take? Well, according to McShay, it is. And so, Dominique, give us a preview. On Friday morning, the day after the draft, if indeed it is Mac Jones who goes number three to San Francisco, Dominic Foxworth comes on this show, Get Up, the following morning. What will be the first words you say about that decision? Uh, I, I will, at that point, I will accept that it has actually happened. But up until then, I'm not going to believe it. Because <laughs> I imagine in my mind a Kyle Shanahan offense with Justin Fields, Brandon Ayuk, Mostert, Kittle in yeah. that dominant offensive line, and I have to imagine that Kyle Shanahan sees that and gets excited. Imagine Justin Fields on the edge with George Kittle and man coverage against a linebacker. Uh, no disrespect to Mac Jones, but he's not scaring people in that way. And to, to go back to the original point off the top that Diana brought up is the criticism of Justin Fields is about his ability to process. I'm not sure how much processing Mac Jones had to do. When you showed that top ten, there were three <laughs> Names in there from Alabama that were not Mac Jones. So yeah. the off the line is absurd. The receivers are absurd. The defense is absurd. I can't imagine. And no disrespect, like I'm sure Mac Jones is a great processor, great quarterback. His numbers support that. But Mac Jones was not dealing with adverse situations. Like Mac Jones was chilling in the pocket, no. throwing to guys who are wide open. You know why it looks like he reads his progressions right quite well? Because Devontae Smith is the number one object, and he's always freaking open. So let's chill. Maybe Maybe I need to chill. I'm the only one who's getting amped up. But it is so confusing to me how these people do a, do their evaluations and come out with with these uh, this coded language about people's ability to read defense and stuff like that. Like Mac Jones is out there doing calculus. He's not. He's throwing to the open guy chill. who's an All American. I, I insist you don't chill until after 10 o'clock this morning. Okay, Jeff Saturday, it, go. <laughs> Jeff. Listen, what Dom is saying is exactly the truth. When you talk about Matt Jones and what he had, nine out of ten times, they've already been out recruited. I mean, my gosh, right? You got guys who can't cover anybody. I mean, he's seeing that thing. He understands where his read is. But let's fast forward to the 49ers. Shanahan is one of the best play callers in the NFL. How many times is he going to have to progress through with all the boots, waggles, all the time where they're moving the pocket? It's a really simple read. Ain't a whole lot of difficulty in that. Shanahan understands how to make quarterback football simple. And so when you talk about Justin Fields being in that system, that is lethal. I mean, this guy pulls that thing down and has an opening. It's not a Mac Jones four or five yard game. It's a 15 to 60 yard touchdown. That's just a difference maker. I, I, I think I, I'm kind of with Dom on this. A little bit of a smoke screen going, trying to put people off of what they're trying to get done. I'm up against the break. Diana, quick final thought on this. We have tons of time to do it. Go. Guys. Shanahan is the same guy who's been in love with Kirk Cousins for the last seven years. That's, true. That's not Justin Fields. 
that's, he's gotten smarter. Kyle right. Shanahan, I, I like that he, I like that he's gotten smarter. No, Kyle yeah. Shanahan is a great offensive coordinator. It, it's clear to me that he may not be a great quarterback evaluator. There are two different skills. If he <laughs> if he's trying he's trying to get Kirk Cousins right now, and, and the, you would think exactly. that he would recognize that after losing two Super Bowls, one as a coordinator for the Falcons and one as a head coach, to quarterbacks who essentially walked on water at the end of those games, you would think he would look at Mac Jones and be like, that, that ain't you. That ain't you. Maybe that's Justin Fields, but it ain't Mac Jones. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.